And right here we have the i9 9900K and we're going to be comparing it against the i7 8700K and also the Ryzen 7 2700X with both stock and overclocked numbers to figure out what would be the best purchasing decision for you. Now we're going to be doing gaming, productivity and streaming benchmarks as well as testing the temperatures and thermals of this new 8 core 16 threaded CPU from Intel to see just how it stacks up against the competition that being their own CPU as well. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with the test bed figures. First of all, we have an RTX 2080 Ti from ASUS. This is the Strix ROG edition, one beast of a card. Then we're coupling that with 16 gigabytes in dual channel mode of DDR4 memory with CL14 timings with 3200 megahertz across all three different CPUs. We're using the same ASRock variants across the different motherboard lines. We're using the Taichi Ultimate for the Z390. The i7-8700K is tested on the Gaming Professional ASRock Z370 motherboard, and then the Ryzen 7 2700K is tested on the ASRock X470 Taichi. And lastly, for cooling, we tested with the same cooling solution, that is the H100i Pro from Corsair. And with that aside, let's bring up the gaming benchmarks first. We've got here Dota 2, 1080p, lower settings. Here we're gonna be stressing the CPU, but also gonna be throwing up some 1440p ultra numbers as well to see that difference minimalize as you go up in resolutions. And at this resolution, we saw that the 9900K and also the 8700K were neck and neck once they were overclocked. And here's the biggest difference with the 9900K compared to the two other CPUs. And that is out of the box, it's pretty much going near max. This thing is aggressively clocked. Even in the BIOS, I'm turning off multi-core enhancement and it just seems to have some very aggressive turbo settings that pretty much take it to 4.7 gigahertz out of the box. For eight cores, 16 threads, that's very aggressive. So basically the catch of this whole review is this CPU is going to be great if you don't know how to overclock and you wanna go out and buy a good motherboard, good cooling solution and just call it a day. However, that said, we can see the 8700K is kicking it hard in a lot of these benchmarks at five gigahertz. Same with the Ryzen 2700X with its 4.2 gigahertz and its value proposition at 1440p. The numbers really start closing the gaps here between these three CPUs. And this is with the RTX 2080 Ti, pretty much the best graphics card you can get for gaming at the moment. Moving across to Rainbow Six Siege, we saw here at 1080p, the lowest settings, the 9900K and the 8700K were coming out a little bit ahead of the Ryzen 7 2700X. However, it is important to note that the monitors used for gaming at the moment, the max that I know of is 240 hertz. So all three of these CPUs are still giving average FPS above these numbers. So unless you are an absolute big ticket item player out there and you're going for massive prizes, then the differences really aren't gonna be that much in actual real world input delay with these three CPUs. However, the Ring Boss does have its advantages. If you wanna check out a video on that, I'll put it up here. However, moving over to the 1440p numbers for Rainbow Six Siege, see that the gap does close and it's all above 144 hertz, which is popular for 1440p monitors, especially for competitive gamers. And then we move over to Assassin's Creed Origins. We saw both the Intels scoring a little bit ahead of the Ryzen 7 2700X, and then moving on to 1440p, what we had here was a gap closing yet again. And of course, if we take it to 4K, the gap's gonna close even more. And now onto Grand Theft Auto 5, 1080p lower settings that I could dial in here to stress that CPU out. We saw that the Intel's, both the 8700K and the 9900K were actually breaking this engine to the point where the 1% and 0.1% lows were giving out some stuttering in certain cases of the benchmarks. And since we do average these benchmarks, uh, we do get a lower 0.1 and 1% low than that of the 2700X, which was running smoother, because it wasn't breaking the engine. Uh, 1440p saw max settings, all three of these CPUs scoring very similar numbers, and it was a smooth experience. Brain fart mid-review. This is why I got the T here, because the T just calms me down, lets all the data come back into my, I'd say it's about a 10 terabyte hard drive up here, and it's just sort of reworking at the moment. Um, and on to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Here we had 1080p lower settings on this community-made benchmark. Showed that the 9900K was coming out ahead of the 8700K, but it didn't come out a whole lot. Like, I was surprised to see that it wasn't coming out a massive amount, especially at 5 gigahertz. The stock 4.4 gigahertz, however, was behind considerably, and then the Ryzen 2700X 
was falling behind too in this benchmark, but we do have to note that the FPS numbers are still very high. All three of these CPUs will be great for gaming on this competitively, moving up to 1440p max settings. Saw these gaps close yet again like all the other games. However, there was still a pronounced difference with the 9900K. And then moving over to Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Blackout. This is the Battle Royale. I'm actually really enjoying this game and they've actually boosted all the FPS caps in multiplayer now. So there's unlimited FPS, which was great just in time for this review. And we saw the numbers here showing that the 9900K was coming out of top. Uh, the 8700K was very close. It was a neck and neck battle. And the Ryzen 2700X was still getting very good FPS. Uh, but when we move over to the streaming benchmarks, this is the game I decided to test the streaming on with the Streamlabs. I absolutely love this. I fell in love with this streaming application. And we saw here that the out-of-the-box settings were six megabits per second off the CPU encoding. So that the 9900K was then able to spread its wings over the 8700K. This is probably the only time in these gaming benchmarks, especially when we're looking at overclocked versus overclocked, where that CPU came out ahead. The 2700X did very well when it came to streaming. And then moving over to 1440p with this game, with the max settings, Saw that there was still a little bit of a difference, but the gap again was closing. So there's the gaming benchmarks done and dusted. And what we saw here was the 9900K. It's very aggressively clocked out of the box. So if you're not into overclocking and you want the best FPS possible, then this CPU is definitely gonna give that. However, the 8700K at five gigahertz, in my opinion, is still the uh, money shot, even for competitive gamers who need the best FPS. And when it comes to streaming, I always recommend people utilize their GPU if possible because the money you spend on a GPU with its GPU compute power versus CPUs is a lot more. So if you can utilize that, then you're definitely gonna be saving money, especially when it comes to utilizing the 8700K and it's five gigahertz overclock. 2700X, it does very well in gaming. If you're a competitive gamer, you're still gonna get a fantastic experience out of this CPU. This is really getting into that territory of paying the premium for these CPUs and getting that little bit extra. And we'll talk about the pricing later, but let's move over now to some productivity benchmarks. And first up, we had Adobe Premiere Pro. This is now utilizing Intel CPUs very well. And the 9900K was coming out on top here. The 8700K and the 2700X were kind of coming in the same ballpark here. And this is a 4K 13 minute video file rendered at 25 megabits per second, which is what I usually uh, do in my workflow. So the 9900K would be the best. However, people have said you can use the HD encoder, which will save you even more time. I'm yet to experiment with it because honestly, my workflow is absolutely fine and I'm using a 1680V2 in my main workstation. But onto 7-Zip, uh, this is a decompression and compression benchmark. Here we saw the 9900K actually trading blows with the Ryzen 2700X when it came to decompressing. When it came to compressing, it was coming out on top. The 8700K was kind of coming close to the Ryzen 2700X here, but then decompressing Ryzen 2700X definitely took the cake. Moving over to V-Ray, a CPU simulated benchmark utilizing all cores, all threads, and the 9900K was coming out on top, and then the, followed by the 2700X and then the 8700K. Moving over to Brizona Studio One, a music benchmark for you music audio files out there, people who love making music, making the Yes Man mix down. We saw the 9900K did the best here, and uh, then followed by the Ryzen 2700X and then also the 8700K. And then moving over to Cinebench, the simulated benchmark that always comes into every single review that pretty much everyone does nowadays. We saw the 9900K coming out on top and you can just see how aggressive this CPU is clocked out of the box. Using my custom overclock settings, I could barely get any more out of the H100i Pro. Then we saw the Ryzen 2700X coming in with a great value proposition. Then the 8700K coming in with the best single threaded score. So I guess this sort of sums it up in general what these three CPUs are all about. And that is the 8700K at five gigahertz still gets up in boogies. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna relate the power consumption figures right after this, because it is pretty important. The i9-9900K was juicing a considerable amount more power than both the uh, two counterparts here. Uh, to the point where I was kind of surprised. Maybe the BIOS needs a bit of an update, some tuning needs to happen, and I guess a more micro level because the temperatures were also pretty damn high. I was surprised. 
out of the box this thing was just going over 100 degrees and then we looked at the overclock numbers they were going near 115 degrees and even after 15 minutes of Ida 64 it was actually thermal throttling so I was lucky I was able to get the benchmarks done but with that said they've raised the TJ Maxx on this CPU now to 115 degrees that's the new safety limit. Previously, it was 105 degrees on the 8700K, I believe. And then on the Ryzen 2700X, I believe it's 95 degrees. And so what we're seeing here is something that demands a big cooler. If you're gonna go with the 9900K, make sure you get something very big for this. I'd say a 360 mil all-in-one or a custom 280 mil uh, cooler would be a prerequisite as we're using a 240 mil here today. And although it's not getting overloaded, it's not getting hot, it's just that base plate is not big enough to absorb that initial heat. And yes, they are using a solder between the die and the IHS this time around, but the problem is I still managed to delid the CPU and that's gonna be a separate video on its own, so stay tuned for those results. But now moving over to Firestrike, we saw here with the CPU physics scores, the 8700K was sort of trading blows with the Ryzen 2700X, 9900K again coming out on top with its both out of the box aggressive settings and its stock settings. But in my opinion, the 8700K with its six cores, 12 threads, was doing very well in this benchmark. And it just shows you when it comes to gaming, I still think the six cores, 12 threads, higher clock speeds is the most relevant choice. But that about wraps it up for the benchmarks. And the last of the new graphs I'm gonna show you guys here is the pricing. In Australia, this thing is going for well over $850 currently. And then in the US, it's going for about 530 US. And we can see compared to the Ryzen 2700X and even the 8700K, it is a league above these two CPUs in terms of pricing. And keep in mind, it will use more heat so in general, it will need a bigger cooler, also need a bigger power supply. And then you've got the premium of the Z390 motherboards now that do have their better hardware on board compared to Z370s and also X470 motherboards. So we're left in a state where this is a premium product, but it's definitely adding a premium, not just on the CPU costs, but all the other augmented costs involved. So that's something you've got to look at with this CPU. How much do you want it? And are you prepared to pay the premium? When it comes to gaming, and that's all you do and you want that flagship CPU, then the 8700K clock to five gigahertz is still going to be my recommendation coming out of this. The 9900K is only gonna get a recommendation for gaming if you have a lot of money and you don't like overclocking and you don't have the time. All you wanna do is go out and buy a massive cooler, good motherboard, and the 9900K and have happy days. Uh, also, when it comes to productivity, it is a ring bus CPU and it is doing better than the 8700K. So if you do need to save time and you are a professional video editor or you do other productivity work that involves needing those extra two cores, four threads of ring bus, then the 9900K will deliver. But again, depends on how much time saved versus that extra cost are you willing to pay. Of course, the Ryzen 2700X here being the value star it is a king of value through and through. I like this CPU a lot because one thing we haven't talked about yet is that both these CPUs here, the Intel counterparts, don't come with coolers included. The Ryzen 2700X at its lowest price point out of these three CPUs does come with the included RGB Prism cooler, which does not only look really good, but it also cools really well. Getting this CPU out of the box up to four gigahertz on all cores threads, no problems with the included cooler. Also, I'm not introducing the mesh architecture chips into the equation, nor am I introducing Threadripper into these comparisons here today, because I do believe they introduce more latency at a base level, but this is something a lot of reviewers aren't testing at the moment. I'm only touching base on this. So what we've got here is the best latency chips from both Intel and AMD on the bench. So in a nutshell, value king, gaming king, king of everything with a considerable premium attached. And that's about it for today. If you guys enjoyed this review, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below what you think of the new i9-9900K. I'm also gonna be doing two separate videos with the 9900K versus the 2700X specifically, because I feel like there's a lot more talking points than just today's video. Then I'll also be comparing it just against the 8700K with talking points of their own. And then of course, Stay tuned for the big one where we're gonna be testing 9900K versus 2700X versus the older Xeon, where I'm gonna be doing a lot more in-depth tests for you guys. <sighs> and that's a wrap. Catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.